I know the title sounds bad, but please just hear me out. My mom, 40 years old, met my now stepfather, 48 years old, when I, 23 years old, was six. At first, it was great. He was super nice and even played with me. But around the time I was seven or eight, my mom was working full time and my stepfather didn't doesn't work as he gets disability for renal failure. My middle brother, who we'll call James, 17 years old, was only about two and my stepfather refused to take care of him when my brother would cry. So at eight years old, I had to teach myself how to make bottles, how to change diapers, and even do laundry. If my chores weren't done, I would get spanked, but it was more like a beating if I'm being honest. He would use hands, belts, and a two by four with holes drilled in it. When I was nine, the youngest Danny, 14 years old, was born and it just got worse. For a while when my mom was on maternity leave, it was nice. He wasn't mean or angry, but as soon as she got to work, it would start again. Only this time, he would just disappear for hours and leave me, a nine-year-old, watching a three-year-old and a newborn. My grades started to slip badly in my parents' opinion. C's were not allowed, and anything under a B warranted a beating in my stepfather's eyes. As the boys got older, it was my job to get them up for school, in the shower, make sure they ate breakfast, checked backpacks, and made lunches. At the end of the day, I'd get them off the bus, help with homework, do laundry, make dinner, and do the dishes. I wasn't allowed to have my door shut unless I was changing, in case someone needed something. And while home was like this, school was no better. I was bullied constantly and horribly. It had gotten to the point where I was depressed and was told to stop having such a pity party. I got a job at 15 to start saving money to move out and had a lot saved up until he stole $800 from me. I'm sorry for rambling, but it felt nice to be able to type all of this out. Anyways, after I moved out, I cut most contact with him, only talking to my mom and my brothers. It was my birthday recently and my mom was working, so my brothers and I went to the mall and hung out for the day. I did not invite my stepfather for obvious reasons, but my mom called me later that night upset that I had, in her words, done nothing but exclude my own father who just misses me being around. And honestly, I snapped. I told her in no way was that man my father, and that the only way I would go anywhere near him was at his funeral. She then proceeded to call me an awful and cruel woman that she couldn't possibly have raised, and then hung up. My mom told my brothers that until I apologized, they wouldn't be allowed to see them anymore, and now James is starting fights with both parents. I don't regret saying it, but did I maybe take it too far? Edit for more context. My brothers are safe first and foremost. I never would have left if I thought that either of them would hurt them. I was treated by both my mom and stepdad like a reminder that their little family wasn't perfect because as my lovely grandmother would put it, a bastard put strain on a family, you know? But my mother wasn't innocent either. She knew about the abuse and could be just as ruthless. She was just verbal with her abuse. She had me on diets from tennis until I moved out and made me drink slim fast if she thought I was eating badly. I wasn't allowed to date or go out with friends. And when I moved to college, she tracked both my spending and my location at all times and would call me randomly if I wasn't at work or school. And because she paid my phone bill, if I didn't pick up, she would shut my phone off. She also could be physical. She's just much smaller than my six foot one inch, 300 pound stepfather. The only reason I'm still in contact with my mom is because I love my brothers and to lose them would be like losing my own children. Thank you all for the support and lovely messages. I really appreciate it. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Your stepfather sounds like a horrible person and your mom is enabling his behavior by continuing to defend him. Good for you for standing up for yourself and setting boundaries with toxic people in your life. You deserve better than that toxicity. Keep living your best life without them dragging you down. Comment two, not at all. You are not the idiot. Your mother is kind of out of place since she is not considering your feelings at all. She is looking at things in a narrow-minded way and excluding your feelings altogether. You are in the right and do not let anyone tell you differently. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for the latest chaos. So the day after my last post, things went from bad to worse. My stepfather, who I'll remind you is not my father by any stretch, decided to show up at my workplace. He made a scene claiming he was there to make amends and bring the family together. 
The nerve of him, standing there like he hadn't made my life a living hell. My co-workers were watching, and I could feel my face burning with shame. I told him to leave, but he wouldn't budge, going on about how I owed him respect and a chance to explain himself. It was humiliating, and I ended up being the one escorted out by security because I lost it and yelled at him in front of everyone. My boss wasn't too pleased, and I got a stern warning, as if I needed more problems. The next day, my brother James called me furious. He had gotten into a huge argument with our parents. He told them he was done with their rules and their control. He said he was moving out as soon as he turned 18, which is in a few months. My mom cried and my stepfather, well, he did what he does best. He got angry. He told James that if he left, he'd cut him off completely. No support, nothing. James didn't care. He was determined to leave this toxic environment. But here's where it gets even messier. James had been saving money too, just like I did. And guess what? My stepfather found his stash and took it, claiming it was for household expenses. James was devastated. That money was his ticket out, and now it was gone. He called me sobbing, and I felt my heart break for him. I did something I never thought I'd do. I went over there. I confronted my stepfather, demanding he give James his money back. It turned into a screaming match, and my mom was pleading with us to stop. In the heat of the moment, my stepfather shoved me, and I stumbled back, knocking over a vase. It shattered, and that's when my mom finally snapped. She yelled at him, something about how he's always been a bully and how she was tired of living like this. She grabbed her purse, took James, and left with me. We went to my place, and she broke down, apologizing for everything. She said she was leaving him, for real this time. I was skeptical, but I saw something in her eyes I hadn't seen before. Determination. She stayed with me for a couple of days, and we talked a lot. She admitted she had been wrong that she had seen the abuse but was too scared to stand up to him. She was afraid of being alone, of not being able to make it without him. But seeing James so broken, and me, her daughter, being pushed around again, it was a wake-up call. James is staying with me now, and we're figuring things out together. My mom is looking for a place of her own. She's getting a divorce, and she's promised to fight for James, to make sure he's safe and supported. It's a mess, a huge mess, but for the first time in a long time, I feel like maybe, just maybe, we're on the path to something better. And as for my stepfather, well, he's alone now. The house is quiet, and he's got no one to push around. I heard from a neighbor that he's been sitting on the porch a lot, just staring out. I guess he's got a lot of time to think about what he's done. Thanks for reading this far. It's been a rough few days, but sharing this helps. My daughter gets betrayed by her only friend and left alone for a concert. So I turn the tables and make sure the traitorous cousin regrets her petty scheme. I, a 49-year-old woman, have a 16-year-old daughter. Let's call her Jane. Jane has always struggled with making friends due to her being incredibly shy and having social anxiety. Her father was also a mean drunk who would yell and throw things when he was drunk, which led to her being sensitive to loud noises and gave her a bit of separation anxiety. When she got to high school, she found a group of friends that she fell into. I wasn't particularly fond of this group, but Jane seemed happy, so I always encouraged her to go to hangouts and events with them. I even bought tickets for her and her best friend to see a band that they loved. I paid for them, and the friend's mother was going to pay me back closer to the concert. The problem started last year when this group started fighting with one another. They were all constantly talking behind each other's backs, having arguments at school, and excluding each other from activities. This caused my daughter a lot of anxiety and led to her having panic attacks in the morning before school because she was scared to go. Because of this, she started missing a lot of school and fell pretty far behind on her schoolwork, which gave her even more anxiety. After a long discussion with my daughter, we decided that the best option would be to move to another school and have a fresh start. When she told her friends she was moving schools, they kicked her out of the group chat and stopped answering her messages. This was obviously devastating for her. This is where I might be TAH. The concert is coming up and I still had the two tickets I bought. My daughter reached out to her ex-best friend and asked if she still wanted to go to the concert with her. The friend never responded, but I got a phone call from her mother saying that she wanted the ticket. I asked if they would still be going together, 
She said no and that her daughter still wanted the ticket so she could go with some other friends who also had tickets. I told her in that case, I would no longer be willing to give her the ticket because I didn't want my daughter to go by herself. The mother got really mad, saying that it was her daughter's ticket and it was not her fault that my daughter didn't have any friends. I made it very clear that since she hadn't paid for it yet, it was my ticket and I could give it to whoever I wanted. She called me an AH and hung up. Now I have two tickets and my daughter still has no one to go with, so she still doesn't want to go. Should I have just given the other girl's mom the ticket instead of having two tickets that no one will use? Edit, update. Thank you everyone so much for the kind words and support. I was second guessing myself and I don't know why. I just didn't want to make the bullying worse. Using the other ticket for myself is a fantastic idea. I thought of it, but I was nervous to ask because of a comment she made a couple of weeks ago about how sad it was that the only person that wants to hang out with her is her mom. The concert is in two weeks, so I will make it clear that if she makes a friend at her new school and would like to take her instead, I will not be upset. I really like the idea of doing a girl's day, maybe going shopping to buy a nice outfit for the concert. Thank you for all the heartwarming stories about your own concert experience, and thank you to everyone who gave me advice. I saw a few people mentioning that I should put her in therapy, you're probably right. I offered before and she was very resistant to the idea, but I'll bring it up again and push a bit more. Thank you again. Three. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, take your daughter to the concert. Life is short, she will love it, so will you. The other mother is a joke. I will sum it up with this. As Sunnyvale Trailer Park manager once said to Richard Ricky Lafleur, in regards to his daughter throwing glass bottles at passing cars, the sweet apple doesn't fall from the sweet tree. If you know, you know. Comment two, not the idiot. Offer to go with your daughter to the concert. My husband and I have each taken our daughter to concerts separately over the years, and those are some awesome memories for all of us. Don't give that awful ex-friend and her equally awful mom any more oxygen or even space in your head. They aren't worth either of your time. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around to hear more about what's been going on. So after the whole concert ticket mess, things took a turn. Jane started at her new school and believe it or not, she actually made a friend. Let's call her Sarah. Sarah seemed nice enough and Jane was over the moon. She even asked if Sarah wanted to go to the concert with her. Sarah said yes, and I was relieved. Finally, something was going right. But then, the night before the concert, Sarah texted Jane saying she couldn't make it. No explanation, nothing. Jane was crushed, and I was fuming. I mean, who does that? So I decided to go with Jane to the concert. It was a bit awkward, but we managed to have a good time. The next week, I found out why Sarah bailed. Turns out she's the cousin of Jane's ex-best friend, the one who wanted the ticket. They planned this whole thing to get back at Jane for leaving the school in their group. Sarah never intended to go to the concert with Jane. I was seeing red. How could kids be so cruel? But it didn't stop there. Jane's ex-best friend's mom called me again, this time to gloat that her daughter had a great time at the concert with her friends. She said it was a shame Jane had to go with her mom. I couldn't believe the nerve of this woman. I hung up on her. Despite all this, Jane's been trying to keep her head up. She's been focusing on her schoolwork and is actually doing better. She's still talking to Sarah at school, even after what she did. I don't get it. I want to tell her to cut Sarah off, but Jane says it's fine that she's over it. I don't know if she's just saying that to make me feel better or if she really is that forgiving. Anyway, thanks for listening. It's been a rough week, but we're getting through it. My friend plays the victim and blames me for her suicide attempt. So I cut her off and showed her what real consequences look like. Am I the idiot for telling my best friend that her ruining her own life has nothing to do with me? Ashley, fake name, and I have an age difference of one year. She is older than me. We have been friends since we were in elementary school. Ashley was popular in high school, which might have gotten to her head. We had this mutual friend, Ray, who had a huge crush on Ashley, and she knew about that. Yet she used to make him do her homework and ask him for money. As a simp, he used to follow her like a goddess. I never had a problem with Ashley before, but I simply started to feel weird about her habit of throwing me under the bus, 
For example, her failing on exams was my fault, according to her mother. A guy proposed to me in grade six. Ashley started a war with that guy for liking me. I changed schools in eighth grade at my parents' wishes. At this time, I was no longer Ashley's bodyguard. We used to stay in touch, but not that much as I was busy with my new schedule and friends. At this time, Ashley became friendless, and I still have no idea why. She dated this school hunk for four years who broke up with her because she just answered, I won't care if you break up with me because I have many dudes who love me and Ray is also there. To his question of, if we ever broke up, what will you do? Well, it doesn't end here. She then goes on to date that guy's her ex-best friend, and yeah, at this time we were still in touch. And I warned her not to date him because if he can't be loyal to his BFF, how will he be loyal to her? But she didn't listen to me, got dumped. And somehow again, the blame was on me. Her private pic got leaked and her mother scolded me. Even though I was unaware of this situation, it was like because of my influence, she was suffering. My mom was unaware of this whole situation. My mother, her sister, and I wanted to study at the same college, which I didn't want. Coming to the point. So for college, I chose a different college that was far away from hers. I stayed in a hostel, and we weren't allowed to use mobile phones. Until Saturday. Weird, but okay for me. She used to text me sometimes, and from that text, I got to know that Ray left her bootlicking. She was again left out in college, with no friends. She cheated on her new boyfriend with his BFF who already had a girlfriend. She had unprotected intimacy with him, and now she is pregnant. And now she demands that I help her because she got dumped. At this point, I am just tired. And yeah, she also wants me to set her up with my elder brother and help her with the baby unaliving thing while I am in the middle of my exam. So I just said that her always trying to ruin her life has nothing to do with me. How am I supposed to help her? And she has been sending me her pic of shy me just in a mess. Am I the idiot? For this, should I help her? We have been friends since elementary school, so what is your suggestion? And she has threatened me that she will end her life if I leave her and do not help her. Her parents would unalive her if they found out about that. Moreover, I will be again blamed for it, and I am scared that she will hurt herself. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. You really should use the block feature on your phone. You are in a different college, unable to use the phone from Monday to Saturday, so it should be easier to block her. You have been enabling her behavior in a way, so it's going to be difficult. But block her, ignore her messages. If your parents ask you to contact her, tell them the friendship is over and you can't tolerate her antics. Not the idiot. Keeping in touch with her is simply going to make her and her parents blame you for her downfall. Comment 2. As far as I can see, this friendship is over. You're trying to move on and she's just dragging you down. If you're concerned for her safety, her college should have a health and wellness center. Contact them about it or her parents or the police. As far as the baby unaliving thing, she and the father should work on that. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around to hear more about this mess. Well, the past few days have been interesting to say the least. Remember how Ashley was threatening to end her life if I didn't help her? Turns out she wasn't bluffing. She took a bunch of pills, but luckily someone found her in time and called an ambulance. She's in the hospital now, stable, but it's like a bomb went off in our lives. Her parents are freaking out and guess who they're blaming? Me, of course, they're saying I should have been there for her, that I knew about her struggles and did nothing. It's like they forgot all the times she threw me under the bus. And now they expect me to drop everything and be by her side. But here's the kicker. While she's been in the hospital, her phone's been blowing up with messages from her ex's best friend, the one she cheated with. I shouldn't have looked, but I did. And what I found was a whole other level of betrayal. Turns out, Ashley's been lying to everyone. She wasn't pregnant at all. She made it all up to trap the guy into staying with her. I was floored. I mean, who does that? And now I'm stuck in this terrible situation, feeling like I have to support her because everyone thinks she's the victim here. But the truth is, she's been manipulating everyone around her, and I'm just caught in the crossfire. On top of all that, Ray reached out to me. He's been keeping tabs on Ashley from a distance, and he's just as shocked as I am about everything. He feels guilty for leaving her, even though she used him for years. And now he's asking me if he should visit her in the hospital. 
I told him to do what he thinks is right, but honestly, I wish he'd just stay away. It's like we're all stuck in this cycle because of Ashley's lies and manipulations. And then, as if things couldn't get any worse, Ashley's ex, the school hunk, showed up at the hospital. He's still in love with her, despite everything. He's been sitting by her bedside, holding her hand and acting like some kind of hero. It makes me sick to my stomach. He doesn't know the half of it, and I can't bring myself to tell him the truth. So here I am, trying to focus on my exams, while my phone keeps buzzing with updates and pleas from Ashley's family to come to the hospital. I feel trapped, like I'm being forced to play a role in a drama I never auditioned for. And the worst part is, I'm starting to feel sorry for Ashley. Maybe it's because we've known each other for so long, or maybe it's because I can't stand to see anyone in pain, even if they've caused so much of it themselves. But I've made a decision. I'm going to help her, not because her parents are pressuring me or because I think it'll fix anything, but because I can't just walk away. It's not in me to do that, even if it means getting dragged deeper into this mess. I'll be there for her, but I'm doing it on my terms. I'm not letting her or her family control me anymore. So that's where things stand. A web of lies, a fake pregnancy, and a hospital room that's become the stage for a twisted reunion. I'm just trying to keep my head above water and get through my exams. Thanks for reading this far. It helps to get it all out, even if it's just to a bunch of strangers on the internet. Thanks for listening. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.